Hello friends, in this video you will be getting information about barter system, evolution of banks, banking system, offline banking introduction, advantages of offline banking and disadvantages of offline banking. Evolution of money from barter to digital money. You ever wondered how money came into existence? Centuries ago, there was no money. So how did people buy and sell? It all started with the barter system. Imagine a prosperous kingdom. In this kingdom, there were people doing different types of work, like weavers, cobblers, farmers, tailors, etc. This is Kisna, a farmer. This is Manoj, a cobbler. When Manoj needs vegetables, he goes to Kisna and exchanges a pair of slippers for the vegetables he needs. Both are happy. This is known as barter system. The system by which one person could exchange goods and services produced by him with goods and services produced by another. Barter system works on double coincidence principle. Two coincidences have to happen. One is that you should find someone who's willing to sell what you want and second is that the seller wants something that you're willing to sell. But does barter system always work? The direct exchange of one commodity for another requires direct satisfaction of both parties. Now, Manoj needs more vegetables and goes to Kisna, but Kisna doesn't need more footwear. Hence, no barter takes place. Now, Manoj needs a haircut and goes to Shambhu the barber. But the value of the haircut is much lesser than the value of a pair of slippers. And the slipper cannot be divided, and hence, no barter takes place. Exchange of goods was not easy. Imagine the confusion. That's why the barter system gradually ended. But what was the alternative? Around the same time, metals were discovered and took over the ancient world. In the 6th century BC, the first coins resembling the current ones appeared. They were small metal pieces with fixed weight and value and bearing an official seal, which is the mark of the government who has minted them and also a guarantee of their value. After independence of India in 1947 and the accession of the princely states to the new union, the Indian rupee replaced all the currencies of previously autonomous states. After its formation, the Reserve Bank of India issued notes and coins on behalf of the Government of India. India has progressed a lot and now has many digital payment options like credit cards, wallets, online transfer facility, thus moving from a cash to a cashless society. So we will know about banking now. Let's get it started. Today, the banking industry is considered as the backbone of the economy and has a major contribution to its growth. It's also the main driver for currency and financial stability. But how did the story of banking start? The term bank is derived from the old Italian word banca, meaning a bench. It referred to the public benches where money changers used to sit for exchanging coins or bills in the marketplace. But it's the goldsmiths of 17th century London who developed banking in its modern form. The goldsmith who used to store wealthy clients' gold in their private vaults soon began to lend this gold to others in exchange of a promissory note and the payment of an interest charge. That was the beginning of banking as we know it today. So what is the general role of a bank? Depositors, or people with money surplus, place their money at the bank in order to earn a return through the credit interest. Borrowers, or people with a shortage of money on the other hand, are willing to pay interest on the money the bank is lending them in order to accomplish an objective they're seeking. And how do banks make profit? A bank's primary source of revenue comes from the difference between the interest it's paying to depositors and the one it's earning from borrowers. A bank also makes profit from charging fees or commissions for services, 
granted by the bank to its customers and from investments. So why are banks regulated? Banks collect funds from depositors in the form of small size deposits and repackage them into larger sized loans. Borrowers, on the other hand, might not be able to repay the money they borrowed from the bank. In addition to that, banks sometimes invest deposits in risky assets. All of these reasons explain the major role of central banks in protecting depositors' money by monitoring the adequate level of riskiness the bank is taking. What is the role of central banks? Central banks oversee monetary policy to implement specific goals, such as currency stability, low inflation, and full employment. They determine the interest rates that influence the bank's pricing schemes and the economy's money supply. They issue currency and grant authorization to establish banks. Central banks also impose a threshold for capital requirements and place reserve requirements to ensure liquidity in crisis mode. They shape lending policies through margin requirements and other tools, and they act as a lender of last resort to finance banks that need liquidity. Today, several types of banks exist to answer the different needs of consumers and to give them a choice in the way they manage their money. A retail bank, for example, provides services to individuals. Commercial and corporate banks serve small to mid-sized businesses and large enterprises. Investment banks specialize in large and complex financial transactions. Private banks offer a personalized financial and banking service to high net worth individuals. So, what do we know today about the future of banking? Direct channels such as mobile and the internet are becoming increasingly important in retail banking as they are in our everyday's life. Customers today expect financial firms to listen, respond, and offer services through social media. Customers across all segments expect highly personalized, convenient, and reliable service, along with 24-7 accessibility. Banking is no longer somewhere you go, but something you do. Offline banking and online banking. An offline transaction, also known as a signature debit transaction, is a payment method that uses a debit card to transfer funds from a checking account to a merchant across a digital credit network. Today, business moves faster and most commercial activities are dependent on banks. Therefore, is being felt for continuous availability of operations. Uninterrupted banking service are absolutely necessary for customer satisfaction and brand protection. Interruptions in business can occur anywhere, anytime, due to any of the following reasons natural calamities like earthquakes, tsunami, etc., terrorist attack, power failures, loss of data connectivity. Whenever there is an interruption in connectivity, it requires some time to get it restored. During this period of disconnectivity, banks are required to provide some essential service to its customers. Offline data capturing ensures basic customer services. Let's know about advantages of offline banking. One advantage is being able to talk to someone if you have a problem with your account. You can talk to someone who will guide you through the problem and will help you in any way possible and can even tell you what went wrong. Being a traditional method of payment makes it more trusted. People still trust the bank checks and drop and use them for payments. Offline mode of payment is direct and do not depend on any other source. For example, internet or payment gateway. This advantage of offline banking. There are some disadvantage of offline banking that makes the user go for online method. Here is a some notable disadvantage of offline payment method. The offline method is limited by many factors by distance and acceptance of another party. It is not safe at all. The party on receiving end will have to check and recheck the received payment. 
not recommended for transaction of large amount hope you guys understood all these topics and if you have any query you can just comment down below and don't forget to subscribe our channel thank you